Yeah, no, the verse that came to my mind, I was just looking for, uh, you know, Colossians one twenty four says, Paul writing to the Colossians, he says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. And all that you have just described kind of adds so much weight to, to the, the, that, that phrase, you know, the, the church of which I am a minister according to the stewardship from, from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to the saints. It just kind of gives you that idea that how much Paul was dedicated to the ministry of the gospel. Hey, welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. Great to have you with us once again this week. I'm here with Pastor Jason Crowley. He is our executive pastor here at Whitefields Community Church here in Longmont, Colorado. And he was the one standing in the pulpit this week. And uh, we were in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, looking, uh, starting verse 16 and going through the end of the chapter. And so if you missed any of that, you want to get over to whitefieldschurch.com and you can download it there or... YouTube, Facebook, or any of your favorite streaming platforms, you can find it up there. And if you would, you know, please like, subscribe. You're watching this on YouTube right now. Just click the subscribe button, you know, hit the thumbs up and or leave us a rate and review if you're on Apple Podcasts or anything like that. It just, it just, anytime you interact with the content, it just kind of pushes us up in that you know, almighty algorithm. And, you know, and as people are asking questions, you know, about, uh, the topics that we are talking about, we can then provide them with Christ-centered and gospel-centered answers to their questions. And so, again, we're, the, we're in this in our series, Strength and Weakness, and uh, looking at Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And we're, we're drawing to a close here as we head into the Christmas season and into Advent. And here in chapter 11, we're looking at the last 16, uh, starting verse 16 through the end. And, and as you said, there was a... a a couple things uh, that, you know, there's a lot to go in here and you only have so much time on a Sunday morning really to cover all of this. And this is what we're here for in these kind of sermon extras is to kind of maybe dive into some things that, you know, get into the weeds with some of these uh, questions or, 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 or things that are happening in the passage uh, that you can't include necessarily on a Sunday morning. And so we just kind of wanted to do that today as part of our sermon extra. And that was just kind of look at, you know, kind of starting in, verse 24, when, when Paul's kind of talking about the things that he went through, uh, you know, he begins there, he says, well, you know, are they Hebrews? I am a Hebrew. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? Of course, you know. Uh, but then he starts to deal with some of the things, you know, that he had to go through of which these super apostles would have considered him weak, and so we just want to kind of dive into that there. So, um, you know, kind of starting there with you know, the receiving 40 lashes less one at the hands of the Jews. Yeah, there's so much that he went through that can really kind of, uh, if we understand what he went through, we can really kind of understand a lot more of the picture uh, of what's going on. And yeah, we can start just dig in there. You know, the the three times he, uh, well, actually at the, the beginning, let's see, 24, five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes minus one. And that really comes from the book of Deuteronomy. That was a, a, a punishment that was reserved for kind of the worst of the worst disciplines uh, or punishments that they could mete out. And um, there was, uh, a, I can't remember the name, but uh, one of the uh, early historians uh, just uh, Justinian, I believe it was, uh, said that they re would reserve that. It was the most despicable punishment that the Jews would do. And that's kind of how it was understood. Yeah, because they weren't allowed to put people to death. So that, this right. is kind of their, you know, this is the max. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. Four, they believed the 40 lashes would put somebody to death and or anything more than 40. And so they lowered it to 39, thinking that uh, if somebody miscounted, then uh, and somebody accidentally died, the shame would be upon the executioner of the, that would carry out those uh, punishments. And so Paul, five times by the Jewish people, he was given that punishment wow. of the most despicable uh, punishment. And that's why I was saying that the, the people who would read this list would think Paul to be foolish and weak and pathetic because the, the, especially this punishment was given to just the worst people 
and, and Paul had it five times, which is incredible. You know, the scars that he must have had on his back. Yeah. And some of it, half, almost, uh, I believe it's about 30% was in the front, even mm-hmm. the beating, and, and the rest was in the back. And so the scars that he had on him would really highlight um, just the, the foolish patheticness that he had um, when people would see him in the culture. Uh, and we can move on to the next three times I was beaten with rods. This is actually not a Jewish discipline. This is actually a uh, Roman punishment, the beating of the rods. And um, you would have somebody, the, the praetor was kind of the, the person who was the judge. And he would go around to different cities and different areas and, and dish out ju- uh, justice. And... Um, then there was somebody that came with him that would actually carry with him a bundle of elm or birch rods and kind of like you know a baseball player he he would undo whenever the punishment was was meted out he would actually find whichever one was best and he'd be you know bending it for whatever punishment it was uh some were less harsh than others you know and um he would pull out his his instruments of, of beatings, and he would find which one, and he would execute the, the beating with the rods. And it was quite just horrific, the, the amount of damage that can be done. So Paul, just by these two, Paul would have had countless scars on him, um, wow. and just so many. It's, it's, it's almost horrific to think of. And then, um, you know, so you have the, the Jewish discipline uh, the worst one, and then you have the worst by um, without killing. Then you have the worst from the Romans, and then you have mob justice stoned. Um, this can be from the Jews, can be, um, uh, but from a formal uh, inquiry. But but the what we know from this incidence instance, um, I believe this one was from. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the city now. <laughs> I'm having, I, I forgot, but this is actually in uh, the book of Acts. It's recorded. Oh, uh, from Ephesus. From, uh, might, yeah, it might have been yeah. Ephesus. He was, he was dragged out by mob justice and stoned and left for dead. Oh, no, that, I don't think uh, it was Ephesus. I think it was uh, Lystra, <laughs> yes, if yeah. I remember right. Mm-hmm. I believe it was Lystra. And so he was dragged out, left for dead by the mob. And this is uh, the time he was stoned. So it was just mob justice. So he's gone through the uh, basically the legal system for the Jewish uh, community, the legal system for Romans. He's gone through mob justice, and he still God has still kept him alive. And it just really it really kind of helps the, us to understand just the things that this poor guy has gone through, you know. And then he moves on to um, the dangers that he experiences in, at the top of 26, he says, on frequent journeys. And then he, he kind of talks about what he, he deals with in journeys when he goes on these, these missionary journeys. Uh, from danger from rivers, we often don't think about that because we have roads. Nah. But in most of the Roman society in that whole area, they didn't have bridges you know, or roads in that area. They would, he would have to come, you know, you'd come to a little road and you'd have to ford the, the river. You'd have to just wade through the river with all your stuff. And then in winter time um, is flood season and the rains come and he, you know, it's very dangerous to go to travel during that time, especially across the river. And, and he, he would do it. And, you know, from robbers, as soon as you leave uh, the community, that you're in, you don't travel by yourself. You travel with a caravan that has people there that can protect you. Because, you know, if you go out there um, on your own, especially when the economy is bad, the worse the economy, the worse the robbers are. Because people, they just, they want to feed their families. And so um, the records show about five years prior uh, to this writing here, um, started a massive famine and drought. And so the robbers building up to this time would have been horrific. You know, there would have been so many robbers. Uh, and so he's talking from experience. I, I, you know, he doesn't say how many times he was robbed, but I yeah. would imagine quite, quite a few times he probably, you know, danger from his own people, danger from the Gentiles. So Jews and Gentiles, danger, danger in the city, and danger in the wilderness. So, you know, there's, that's really the only thing you have. 
you have in cities and you have outside of cities. They didn't really have suburbs back then. Right. So you end up getting, um, he's experienced danger pretty much everywhere he goes. Yeah, because these cities were all surrounded, most of them by walls. Yeah. You know, fort- they were fortified cities. And so once you left that, you were just basically on your own. Yeah. And so inside the city, it would probably be the Jewish community um, really sparking the Gentile community against him. And that, mm-hmm. that, we sh- we've seen that in the book of Acts about three times, I believe. And, um, and so outside the city is the robbers, you know. And so is really no safety for Paul. You would think it would be in the city, but it's really not. Um, and then it, it's fascinating. He goes through that um, he, he's gone through a lot of shipwrecks, which I think is fascinating because we only have record, I believe, of one shipwreck mm-hmm. uh, in the book of Acts. But he's been through multiple shipwrecks. And um, that's kind of, you know, even one of the he's been through three shipwrecks and one of them he spent the day and the night drift at sea. So that's probably mm. his worst shipwreck. But um, he's went through, we have records of about nine sailing uh, journeys, but most likely he had many more than that. And so, and if you think about ships and understand the kind of the culture back then, ships were pretty rickety. They yeah. were made out of wood. They sunk, sunk uh, not quite often, but it wasn't rare uh, to have uh, some a ship just not make it back, yeah, yeah. you know. And so these poor individuals that were traveling by sea a lot would end up missing quite often because of the seas in the Mediterranean. And so poor Paul, you know, out of all his journeys, his shipwrecked three times. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's such a rough place. <laughs> You know, people go, oh, I wish I lived back then. No, you don't. No, 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 no you don't. <laughs> you do not wish yeah. you lived back then. <laughs> so, yeah, because if you think, if you were one of Paul's companions, you, you, there was a high, high percentage, highly likely that you would either get stoned, there would be a yeah. riot, uh, you'd be shipwrecked, or you'd be robbed. Yeah, so. yeah. Do you want to join me on the mission? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. Thank There's you. There's a high yeah. percentage that one of these four things is going to happen. You know? yeah. So. yeah, odds are, yeah. Some, if you travel with Paul, that was going to happen at least once a month, maybe two. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how he got people to travel with him, <laughs> yeah. but he did. And, and, and even it's where he, he um, uh, it says in verse 27, in toils and hardships, that's kind of the what he's going to be talking mm-hmm. about. And then he says, many sleepless nights. So he's probably, um, tra- this isn't really stress related because that's in verse 29. So sleepless night, he's probably traveling. Yeah. Um, he's probably working to all hours. Uh, if you remember some of the stories in, in um, Acts and also in through his letters, he would uh, often stay up late teaching all through the night. Uh, to these individuals who had to work during the day. And sometimes he was teaching during the day, uh, it's recorded, and he would stay up late at night doing tent making to m- earn himself a living because he just didn't have money. So, you know, he was putting in all hours in the mission field. It wasn't regular hours, you know, nine to five for Paul, which really gives us a great understanding of his life. That, But even though he went through that, and even though he had to, um, pay for a lot of what he didn't want to be a burden. So he ended up doing tent making and everything. It says he still went hungry and thirsty, often without food, uh, in the cold. So he slept in the cold exposure. This is an interesting word, uh, in the cold and exposure. Exposure means naked. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have clothes sometimes, probably from shipwrecks, robberies, um, you know, beating stonings, his clothes would get ripped. Um, so you get this great picture of what Paul went through and what he lived. And, um, if the more you understand the culture around these incidents, it's kind of like adding color to a black and white movie, you know, and, and better sound. You can just, it really comes to life. Um, so. Yeah. No, the verse that came to my mind, I was just looking for, uh, you know, Colossians one twenty four says, Paul writing to the Colossians, he says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. And all that you have just described kind of 
adds so much weight to, to the, the that that phrase, you know, the church of which I am a minister according to the stewardship from from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to the saints. It just kind of gives you that idea that how much Paul was dedicated to the ministry of the gospel and yeah. that he would go through all of this stuff. This was his stewardship. This was how much he was dedicated to. And this was, you know, in a sense, they called it weakness in him, you know, hence the, you know, the, uh, and he would say, no, this is my, my strength and my weakness. The God is magnified and glorified through these afflictions that I'm going through. And that was the strength of his ministry for the, for the gospel. Yeah. It's just amazing thing to think about. You know, just as you listed those things, as that verse came to my mind in Colossians, like, okay, now I, I get what Paul's getting at there, yeah. you know? And uh, that's just amazing to think about that. You and you, place that in context, you know, of all those things that he went through. And you could see people say, well, Paul, how come you come, you know, is God against you? And no, you know, it's no, God's for me. God is with me and, 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 and I'm for you, you know, and the gospel and it grow, growing, bearing fruit in your lives. And this is what I'm willing to go through, you know, as, as your father in the faith. So it's quite a testimony to, mm-hmm to to those to those folks and yeah no thank you for sharing that i mean just you know that was just great bringing all of that out you know that you can't share on a sunday morning but we can <laughs> share in this yeah. share in this context and uh so if you guys enjoy that you know again thumbs up like and subscribe and uh we are as i said we're getting close we have a couple, couple more chapters left in this and then we're looking forward to next year when we we head into our next uh going through the a book of the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. God bless.